Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make a 2D system in Maya and later I'll show you how to use it to transfer 2D animations to Unreal Engine. In the first part we'll only focus on building the system in Maya. As you can see, we're going to use the gnomes to make these little tops for the multi expressions. If you want to do this as well, it's very important to have your sprite order done correctly. To illustrate what we're going to do with our sprites, I made a little chart. Red shows the column number, yellow shows the row number, and the pink shows the output to receive a specific sprite. So let's say that uh, we want the sprite number 8. It is on both column and row number 2. We will multiply the column number by the total number of columns and then add it to the row. So it'd be 2 times 3 plus 2. This isn't necessary, but as you can see in the image, if you visualize the chart, we can segregate the rows and the columns to fit two different purposes while streamlining the process of selecting our sprites. For me, each row is an expression, while each column is a degree of openness. At this most complex form, the animator will want phonetics, for example, IAU, for each mouth expression, and smoother mouth closing and opening animation. This, re and this may result in hundreds of drawings, so abstract as much as you feel necessary. With this in mind, we'll go to Krita to show you how I streamline the sprite making process. You may use whatever you want, however, if you're struggling with Krita, if you're struggling, uh, Krita will be your free and open source alternative. The program has a set of texture templates. I picked the one key template as I have a small and simple face to work with. If you haven't animated in Krita before, now it's your time to learn. On the top right side, pick the animation tab and the timeline will appear up at the bottom. A right click on a cell to create a duplicate frame. Always pick a duplicate frame. If you select it with nothing drawn in it, it will be an empty keyframe anyhow. So when you forget to uh, turn your drawing into a keyframe, which happens more often than not, uh, creating a blank frame will be a mild annoyance at best. Every frame after a key is a whole frame, unless modified. Then it will be turned into a keyframe. So, when we want a new blank keyframe, we pick a spot in the timeline and we press the dead key. One other thing is the onion skin menu. Clicking the light bulb icon next to all layer will show you the before and after frames. The onion skin menu helps you select how many frames before and after you want to select and their intensity. This is a bare bone explanation, but congratulations, you're a 2D animator now. The reason I'm using the timeline, instead of creating new layer for each expression, is because we can export the animation as an image sequence. This not only saves time in exporting, but it, but it is also a foolproof method of having sprites in the right order. Make sure you export as PNG, and now we can move on. Hopefully your character already has the FK IK system done. If not, go do it. The face can go on top of it. Since Bimo's face is flat, I'm going to use a single polygon for each eye and mouth. Your surface will be most likely curved, so subdivide the face as much as you need and, sh and shrink wrap it around the rig. Then delete the history.
Now create the joint. You can use point constraint to make sure that the joint is perfectly in the center of the face. The orientation doesn't really matter, just make sure that it makes sense. Parent them to the rig and skin the face. Let's add contours to the joints. I added an extra contour to move the whole face. If you're using constraints for the joints, you might also like to add scale constraints. I find it that it adds a whole extra layer of creativity for the animators. We can finally work on our 2D system, add the controls that move the textures, and an attribute that switches the sprites. I also like to have a constraint to have the sprite control follow the joint control. On the face control, I added two attributes to control the sprite and joint control visibility. Let's add our sprites. To animate the sprite, we first have to take use image sequence. If we move around the timeline, we should see them change. Our goal is to take this control from the timeline and attach it to our attribute. To do this, click on the hyper shade icon on the top right, click on your material and click to reveal the input and output connection. You bring the place to the texture node and the file into the node editor and click reveal input and output connections again. There you will see the timeout connecting to the file node. Add the control with the sprite attribute and replace the timeout with it. Now you can use the control to switch sprites. Congrats! Now add the multiply divide node and change the input to x and to y to 0.1. Check your controls transform direction and add both moves horizontal to the node first and vertical second. For me x goes first and z goes second. Then open the place to detection node and open the offset tab where you're going to connect the output text to offset U and output Y to offset V. Check how it moves and adjust if needed. Sometimes the direction move opposite to the control. Multiply it by 0.1 minus 0.1 if needed. This has been the simple part. For most cases, this should work well on Maya, and this is what I use for beam size. But for the mod, I have far more sprites, and I also want to control the tongue. So I'll show you how to use layers and the enums. We build on what we made, so we'll add two enum attributes to the mod. Enum start from zero, and each enum name is given a number. In, Maya, in Maya's example, green is 0 and blue is 1. 
If I were to add red, its number would be 2. I always make sure that the first sprite I make is planned so we can start from 1 instead of 0. Now let's open the node editor and add a, a multiply divide node. Let's multiply the column by the, tot, by the total number of columns, in my case 3. Then we will add the result to a plus minus node where we will add the rows attribute. Add this to the sprite number attribute and everything should work right. If not, the sprite number attribute will display the outwards so you can troubleshoot it. The last bit is the most complicated part, as uh, we have to work with layer texture. I'm going to add the tongue to be most mouth as another layer. As you can see, we will be uh, able to move the tongue around without clipping the borders. To do this, we're going back to Krita and painting white where the tongue can go. The basics of masking is black means no and white means yes, it's not quantum science. Make sure that you have the exact same number of frames as the mod sprites, even most of it is blank. We want to mask shapes to follow the mods, so we want to play the exact same time. The tongue is drawn separately with its own number of sprites. Once everything is exported from Krita, we can return to Maya in, node, in the node editor. Let's build over what we already have with our mod sprite system. Import the mod sprite into the node editor, click on it and then go to attribute editor where we're going to check to use the image sequence. Then connect everything connected to the mod sprites into the mask. Now we can make a control for the tongue and parent it to the mouth. I need a custom attribute to select the sprite, so I add it to the controller. Back to the node editor, add the tongue sprite and make sure that the image sequence setting is ticked. Make that to the system we've done before and now we can create the layer texture node. On the first input box, we attach the tongue as the color and the mask as the alpha. Then we create a new input box by clicking next to the first one and add the mod as the color. Attach the color to the material node and the mod sprite's transparency to the same node. On the first input, make sure that the pen mode is set on Add and now everything should look right.
The link for the rig is in the description where you can download it for free. This should cover everything for the first part. On the next one, I will show you how to modify the rig to be important to Unreal Engine. Without further ado, thank you for watching.